Welcome to Prajim Technologies. I am Venkat. This is part 63 of ASP.NET video series. In this session, we'll discuss about cookie-less sessions in ASP.NET. Before continuing with the session, I strongly recommend to watch part 60, 61 and 62 of this video series. In ASP.NET, there are different techniques to send data from one web form to another. In the previous sessions of this video series, we have discussed about cross-page postback, context.handler object, query strings, cookies, and session state variables. In this session, we'll discuss about cookie-less sessions. By default, sessions use cookies. The session ID is stored as a cookie on the client computer. This session ID is then used by the web server to identify if the request is coming from the same user or a different user. Let's understand what we mean by this with an example. Before that, let's understand what we have done in the previous session of this video series because we will be using the same example to understand cookie-less sessions. Here I have an ASP.NET web application project with two web forms. On web form 1 I have two text boxes where the user can enter their name and email and once they click on this go to web form 2 button the user will be navigated to web form 2.aspx and on this web form I have two label controls which will display the name and email that we have entered on web form 1. And how are we doing this? Using session state variables. So when I click this button, we are retrieving the name and email from the respective text boxes and then storing them in these session state variables using the keys name and email. And then we are redirecting the user to webform2.aspx. On webform2, in the page load event, we are actually retrieving the name and email of the user from the respective keys and then displaying them in the label controls. So obviously, as you might expect, when we run this now and when we enter the name and email on web form 1 and click on that button, we will navigate the user to web form 2 and on web form 2 the values are displayed. And obviously to do that we are using session state. Now the important point to understand here is that web applications work on a stateless protocol, meaning when we make a request for this web form 1.aspx, the web server receives the request, it creates an instance of this web form 1 class you know, creates all the objects on that web form, process the events, generates the required HTML, sends it back to the client, and what happens to that web form 1 object on the web server? It will be immediately destroyed. And once the HTML is posted back to the client, the web server has no idea about where the request has come from. Now the user can type into these text boxes, select options, and then once he clicks this button, another request goes to the web server. And then what happens, it creates another instance of that web form, generates the HTML, sends it back to the client and destroys that web form. Now the point is, how is the web server knowing whether the request is coming from the same user or from a different user? So how is it able to relate these requests, whether if they are coming from the same user or from a different user? That is with the help of something called session ID. So whenever I open a browser and type in the URL of this application, for example, when the web server receives the request, it's going to create you know, an, a unique number called session ID and assign it to that request. And then that session ID is going to be used by the web server to identify if the request is coming from the same user or from a different user. That's how the web server relates you know, whether if the requests are coming from the same user or from a different user in spite of web applications working on the stateless protocol HTTP. Okay, let's see uh, where is the session ID stored. Now from the slide, you know, by default sessions use cookies. The session ID is stored as a cookie on the client computer. So right now I'm using Google Chrome as the default browser with Visual Studio. If you want to follow along with me, set Google Chrome as your default browser and the easiest way to do that uh, is within Visual Studio. Right click on any of the web form within Solution Explorer, select this option browse with and in browse with window select Google Chrome click this button set as default and click on browse. That will set Google Chrome as the default browser. So when you run the application using Control F5, uh, the web form will be opened using Google Chrome. So within Google Chrome, to check, look at that, I entered test and test email, I click on go to web form 2 and then it displays the enter name and email on web form 2. Now let us see where is the session ID stored. It is stored in a cookie. So to look at the session cookie, right click on the browser select inspect element and within this window that opens up click on resources and then within the resources window expand cookies and that you should find localhost and within localhost you know after you select that you should see you know there is an 
cookie with name asp.net underscore session ID and look at the value it is this unique number that will be used by the web server to identify if the request is coming from the same user or from a different user. Look at that. On web form 1 I entered this value. Look at the session ID value. It doesn't change. With every request it's going to be the same. I entered this value. So when I click go to web form 2 what's happening? It's going to create an instance of web form 2. Retrieve those values from the session. How does it know those session variables belong to me because of this unique number? If another user is, is accessing Web Form 1, there will be a unique session ID for that user for the browser instance he has opened. That's how it's able to identify whether the session is coming from the same user or from a different user. Okay, now if I disable cookies here, now there is no way for the web application to store that cookie ID on my, com on my client computer. So if that's the case, then the web server will have no idea if the request is coming back from me. So let's disable cookies and see what happens. So to disable cookies in Google Chrome, click on that settings button there. Uh, I mean select settings and in search settings but, uh, text box type cookies. Click on content syntax and choose this radio button block sites from setting any data. You're basically telling don't allow sites to write any data to my machine and then click OK. So at this point we have disabled cookies. So let me run this now. So we have disabled cookies so the web server will not be able to store that session ID. You know there will be a session ID but then that cannot be stored on my client computer. So when I type in something here maybe test or you know and then when I click on this button the request goes to the web server but look at that on web form 2 it's not displaying anything. Why is that? because the web server, you know, when you requested web form 1, it created an instance, assigned a session ID, it sent the HTML back to the client computer. On the client computer, we are not storing the session IDs. So when you click on, after entering the data, when you click on that go to web form 2, what happens? Another request goes to the server and then it creates a new session ID. So whatever variables you post in to session variables you know it doesn't know when you, when when the user is redirected to web form 2 you know that's a new request for web form 2 so it cannot relate the request for web form 1 to web form 2 you know and then you know assume that if it is coming from the same user okay it doesn't know that why because there is no session id to link both of those requests together okay that's why when i click this you know it doesn't display anything Okay, so many users actually doesn't like websites writing information to their computers. So it's very common for users to disable cookies. If that's the case, when websites using cookies, you know, to manage sessions may not work as expected. However, to overcome this problem, cookie-less sessions can be enabled. And to enable cookie-less sessions, all we have to do is set the cookie-less attribute to true in web.config file. Now every web application has got a configuration file called web.config and within web.config under configuration element under system.web element we have the session state element. The mode is in proc and timeout is 20 minutes. Along with these attributes we can set an attribute called cookie less. I'm going to set that to true. Look at the name of the attribute. It's very meaningful. Cookie less sessions. So we are going to use cookie less sessions. Okay. Now let me close this browser. Let me run the web form and request web form 1.aspx. So look at what happens when the web form is rendered. I have a unique number here. Okay, this is nothing but the session ID, that unique number. So now if I type in something here, test and maybe test email, I click that. Look at that number, it doesn't get changed. So when I click go to web form 2, so that session ID is transmitted between the client and the web server with every request and response and that's how the web server is able to remember if the request is coming from the same user or from a different user. Now look at this. Let me go back. I type in something here maybe test email 1 and test 1 and what I'm going to do before I submit I'm going to change this to something. Oops. Okay. Let me go back. Let's change this to something so I change the session ID I click this button okay now I will change this to set this session ID to something else and look at that it doesn't work because it thinks the request for web form 2 is coming from a different user okay so 
cookie-less sessions can be used to to even if users disable cookies and all cookie-less sessions can be used so when cookie-less sessions are enabled the session ID is part of the URL and is sent back and forth between the client and the web server with every request and response the web server uses the session ID from the URL to identify if the request is coming from the same user or from a different user for cookie-less sessions to work correctly this is very important relative URLs must be used in the application when redirecting users to different web forms let's understand what we mean by this with an example let me actually look at this at the moment to add the URL of my page is it's running on localhost which means on the local server at port number 27858 and I am viewing webform2.aspx okay that's the URL now look at this when I click this button on webform1 when I click this button I'm redirecting the user to webform2.aspx okay and look at this I'm using a relative URL here which means I'm, I'm not using the complete path I'm saying from the root directory go to webform2.aspx okay but then another way to actually get around this problem is if you remember HTTP colon actually let's run this and let's identify the port number at which the application so if you look at this that's the port number uh, 27858 is the port number at which my application is running so I can say HTTP colon for slash for colon for slash for slash localhost colon what's the port number 27858 so 27858 forward slash webform2.aspx so I'm giving a complete URL here it's also called as absolute URL okay now if I use absolute URL will the cookie less sessions work as expected no and you can understand why so when I actually request webform1.aspx the web server will create an instance of that assign that unique session ID to the URL automatically and sends that back to me but then here look at that I am I am entering test and test email as the value and when I click go to webform2 on the click of this button what we are doing we are changing the URL to something like this we are knocking off the session ID okay so because of that it thinks the request for web form 2 is coming from a different user because of the different session ID and that's why the absolute URLs will not work correctly with cookie less sessions so always use relative URLs if you're using cookie less sessions on this slide you can find resources for ASP.NET C sharp and SQL server interview questions that's it for today Thank you for listening. Have a great day.